This is the Turf Zone Podcast, your central information and news hub, bringing together professionals from turf associations across multiple states to share things to help you in your business. Brought to you in partnership with our friends at the Turf Grass Council of North Carolina. This episode is sponsored in part by Bysod, world-class service on demand. Visit us online at www.bysod.com. Now, let's get in the zone. Welcome to the Turf Zone. In this episode, we feature an article titled Zoysia Grass Putting Greens, What We've Learned So Far, written by Tyler Carr, John Sorokin, Ph.D., and Jim Brosnan, Ph.D., all from the Department of Plant Sciences at the University of Tennessee. Zoysia grass is a warm season turf grass used on lawns and golf courses in the transition zone in southern United States. Zoysia grasses have become popular in part because they require fewer inputs and offer enhanced cold and shade tolerance compared to Bermuda grass. On golf course fairways, tees, and roughs, two different species of zoysia grass are most common. Zoysia japonica, such as Meyer, El Toro, and others, and Z. matrella, such as Zeon, Zorro, and others. Continued turf grass breeding efforts have sparked an interest in zoysia grass for use on putting greens. In 1996, Diamond was released as a fine textured zoysia grass with potential to be used on putting surfaces. However, research from Clemson University determined that ball roll speeds were too slow for tournament purposes. More recently, three Z. Matrella cultivars, Prism, Primo, and Trinity, have been released for use on putting greens in addition to Laser, a first-generation hybrid of Z. Matrella and Z. Minima. These improved zoysia grasses were planted at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville in 2018 to study their potential for use on putting greens over multiple seasons. This article will provide a brief overview of what has been learned in that research effort. Nitrogen Fertilizer Requirements and Green Speed One of the major topics surrounding zoysia grass management on putting greens is in fertilizer requirements. A 16-week study in 2020 compared the performance and quality of PRISM, PRIMO, Trinity, and LASER when receiving annual end rates of 1.5 or 3 pounds of N per 1,000 square feet at 0.19 or 0.38 pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet every two weeks during summer, supplied as urea. All plots were mowed at a 0.115 inch height of cut with a walk-behind reel mower. Most golf course superintendents are very familiar with using a stimp meter to provide a measure of green speed. When mowing and rolling five times weekly, green speeds for all zoysia grasses tested averaged at least 10.5 over the 16-week study period, even when receiving 3 pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet. In general, the 3-pound rate resulted in superior color compared to the 1.5 rate, while still maintaining green speeds greater than those historically reported for diamond. Further testing of other annual end rates between 1.5 and 3 pounds per 1,000 square feet will be needed to determine the specific amount of N required to maintain acceptable quality and optimal green speed on zoysia grass putting greens in Tennessee. Nonetheless, the range of end rates tested in the study provides a starting point for golf course superintendents considering renovating to zoysia grass putting surfaces. Bermuda grass encroachment. Aside from managing zoysia grass for performance, golf course superintendents will likely face encroachment from another warm season turf grass, Bermuda grass. Controlling Bermuda grass in Z. japonica typically involves multiple applications of Fusilade II plus Turflon ester. However, the tolerance of greens type zoysia grass to this treatment is unknown. A two-year study was initiated in August 2020 at the University of Tennessee and the University of Arkansas to evaluate the tolerance of PRISM and laser zoysia grass to several post-emergence herbicides, including Fusilade 2 at 4 ounces per acre, 
Turfline Ester at 32 ounces per acre, Fusilade 2 at 4 ounces plus Turfline Ester at 32 ounces per acre, Revolver at 26.2 ounces per acre, and Dismiss NXT at 8 ounces per acre. Unlike Z Japonica, both Fusilade 2 plus Turfline Ester and Turfline Ester alone resulted in unacceptable and prolonged injury to both Prism and Laser Zoysia Grass. Interestingly, Fusilade 2 applied alone resulted in limited injury. The same negative effects of Turfline Ester and acceptable tolerance of Fusilade 2 have been previously reported for Diamond Zoysia Grass. Additionally, Revolver was safe on Prism and Laser, whereas Dismiss NXT resulted in unacceptable injury. These treatments will be applied again in 2021 at both locations to make sure responses are consistent over time. As zoysia grass use on putting greens increases, additional research will be needed to understand tolerance of greens-type cultivars to other herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides used for pest management. Establishment The single greatest concern golf course superintendents express about renovating putting greens to zoysia grass is the slow establishment from sprigs at 8 to 12 weeks compared to ultra dwarf Bermuda grass at 6 to 8 weeks. A major research focus at the University of Tennessee is to explore methods to hasten zoysia grass establishment from sprigs. A field study evaluating establishment of prism zoysia grass in April, May, June, and July was initiated in 2020 and is being repeated in 2021. In this study, prism zoysia grass was sprigged at 1,200 bushels per acre at each timing. One week prior to sprig harvesting, lexicon at 21 fluid ounces per acre was applied to establish prism zoysia grass at Blade Runner Farms in Poteet, Texas. Before planting sprigs, starter fertilizer, 182412, was applied to the experimental area at 0.5 pounds of P2O5 per thousand square feet, and organic fertilizer, 620 Milorganite Classic, was applied at 0.25 pounds of nitrogen per 1,000 square feet, totaling 0.63 pounds nitrogen per thousand square feet, 0.58 pounds of P2O5 per thousand square feet, and 0.25 pounds K2O per thousand square feet. Additionally, Ronstar Flow at 80 fluid ounces per acre was applied immediately prior to planting. During establishment, irrigation was applied five times daily replacing 150% of the previous day's evapotranspiration, which was estimated using the Measure IO EarthStream platform. Planting date affected establishment in 2020 as establishment rates increased with planting month. However, prism zoysia grass planted in June and July did not fully establish in 2020, which was likely a result of fall temperatures that were not conducive for warm season turf grass growth. Prism planted in late spring, April or May, had slower establishment rates than the summer plantings, but established fully in the same growing season. Planting prism sprigs in early summer and at rates greater than those used in this study could accelerate establishment and warrants further investigation, as several golf courses have shown success when establishing zoysia grass sprigs at rates of 1,800 to 2,000 bushels per acre. The effect of pre-plant herbicides on PRISM establishment was tested in May 2020 and repeated in May 2021 using the same previously described establishment methodology. Treatments tested included Ronstar Flow at 122 fluid ounces per acre, Tower at 32 fluid ounces per acre, Regal Star 2 at 200 pounds per acre, Anderson's Crabgrass and Goosegrass Control at 305 pounds per acre, and an experimental herbicide from PBI Gordon. Anderson's Crabgrass and Goosegrass Control and Regal Star 2 both severely prolonged establishment, which was not unexpected given the active ingredients in those herbicides. An application of tower before planting hastened establishment compared to the non-treated control. Conclusion 
While much has been learned about managing new zoysia grass cultivars on putting greens over the past 18 months, many things still remain unknown and warrant further research. The University of Tennessee will be diligently working to learn more about these grasses to support golf course superintendents considering a renovation to zoysia grass in the future. For more information on our work, please connect with us on Twitter at UT Turfgrass or visit the University of Tennessee Turfgrass Science and Management website. For all links, images, and resources associated with this article, please check out our show notes. And don't miss an episode. You can subscribe at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit us at theturfzone.com. You've been listening to The Turf Zone. Thank you to our sponsors, including By Sod, world-class service on demand. Visit us online at www.bysod.com. For more episodes of The Turf Zone, visit theturfzone.com and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.